Hello and welcome everyone. Have you ever heard of a man who turned mathematics into $30.7 billion at Wall Street? No. Well, you're in luck because today you'll learn more about Jim Simons, the brain behind Renaissance Technologies, a financial magic shop that has been thriving since 1982. A typical finance guru? No, better than that, a remarkable man who decided to mix mathematics and money, and oh how it paid off. So, grab yourself a nice little coke and dive with us into the complete story of Jim Simons, the man who turned numbers into dollars and who has revolutionized the financial game like no other. Get ready for a roller coaster of mathematics, money, and a lot of success. Before we begin, let's first take a look at the childhood of this incredibly talented man. And it's in a beautiful city called Brookline, in Massachusetts, where the little boy named James Harris Simons was born in 1938, into an American Jewish family. He had an ordinary childhood and was raised by his parents, Marcia and Matthew Simons. During the winter of 1952, the one who was nicknamed Jim began, at just 14 years old, to show an increased interest in earning money. Near his home, in the Garden of Breck, he did his little business, although he didn't really have the wind in his sails. Lost in his thoughts, he deeply reflected on what mattered most in his life. Jim then talked about his projects and his burning desire to study mathematics at MIT. Mocked by those around him, he decided to defy the skepticism and laughter of people. Filled with exceptional confidence and determination, he was resolved to do something special, influenced by supportive parents. Parallel to his studies, Jim Simons was an accomplished athlete in his youth. He was a high school swimming champion and ran the Boston Marathon in 3 hours and 15 minutes. He was also a great lover of classical music and even played the cello in an amateur orchestra. Added to this, Jim was very fond of playing chess, and it's probably for this reason that he developed a strategic and highly intelligent mind. At school, he was a mischievous little boy who loved reading and frequently borrowed four books a week from the local library, many of which were above his school level. In 1958, he earned a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from MIT. Jim had accumulated enough credits to obtain, at the age of 20, a bachelor's degree in mathematics. When he returned to MIT for graduate studies, his advisor suggested he complete his PhD at the University of California, Berkeley. At that time, he met his future wife Barbara Bluestein, and they decided to move to Berkeley and get married there. Simons made significant strides in his thesis on differential geometry, studying curved and multi-dimensional spaces using methods of calculus, topology, and linear algebra. He simultaneously developed a keen interest in trading. He invested $5,000 he had received as a wedding gift and conducted research, notably investing in stocks of companies like United Fruit Company and Selenese Corporation. Frustrated by the stagnation of prices, he explored trading in commodities and futures, fascinated by the potential for short-term gains. Jim finally obtained his PhD in mathematics from Berkeley under the guidance of Bertram Costant in 1961, at the young age of 23. Thus, he made his first step towards success. Soon after, Simons undertook mathematical work primarily focused on the geometry and topology of manifolds. He was also related to the Yang-Mills function on four manifolds and had an impact on modern physics. These contributions and others to geometry and topology led Simons to become the recipient in 1976 of the AMS Oswald Veblen Prize in Geometry. He was also elected in 2014 to the United States National Academy of Sciences. In parallel, he started a company with Colombian classmates, producing vinyl floor tiles and PVC pipes. In 1964, Simons worked with the National Security Agency on code breaking and for the following four years, he was part of the research staff at the Defense Analysis Institute's Communication Research Division. He concurrently taught mathematics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and Harvard University. He was also a professor and head of the mathematics department at Stony Brook University and sold his services to IBM to break the Lucifer block cipher, an early but direct precursor to the data encryption standard. In 1974, Simons received the Oswald Veblen Prize in Geometry from the American Mathematical Society, the most honorable distinction in the field, for his work with Chern as well as for his earlier research on minimal varieties. He then decided to slow down with Stony Brook, significantly reducing his commitments to them, to fully dedicate himself to currency trading. In 1978, convinced of his profit potential, Simons officially left academia to create his own investment firm. And do you know which one I'm talking about? Yes, you guessed it, 
I'm talking about monometrics. Because he was more than convinced that financial markets exhibited detectable patterns through mathematical models, Jim dared to venture into innovation by founding this company and making wise choices, including hiring Leonard Baum, a mathematician specialized in hidden Markov models, who helped him develop algorithms for analyzing the foreign exchange markets. Together, they created a trading strategy that was a resounding success. The ingenious mathematician aimed to create a sophisticated trading system based on algorithms, and that's what led to the development of the piggy basket. After that, Simons created the hedge fund Limroy, which used mathematical models, charts, and human intuition to trade currencies, commodities, and bonds. And with the help of mathematician James Axe this time, Jim found a mathematical approach to trading to eliminate emotional highs and lows. Axe, another of his very talented mathematicians, contributed to the development of a computerized trading system. Sandor Strauss, a very talented computer scientist, played a crucial role in collecting and analyzing historical price data, thereby improving Axe's trading models and leading to better results. You got it. Jim's grand strategy here was to have the titans of mathematics and physics on his side to develop investment models based on complex algorithms and thus ensure the success of his projects. Simons understood that the success of his business depended on the intelligence and talent of his employees. Therefore, he recruited a top-tier team of mathematicians, physicists, and computer scientists, offering them a stimulating work environment and significant resources. Next, the one nicknamed the King of Quants, for his quantitative approach to investing got serious when he founded Renaissance Technologies in 1982, which turned out to be one of the most successful hedge funds in history. The fund generated average annual returns of more than 30% over more than 30 years, well above traditional stock indices. Simon's Renaissance Technologies hedge funds, surfing the global markets, indeed used mathematical models to analyze and execute trades, many of which are automated, as well as computer models to predict price fluctuations of financial instruments. These models rely on analyzing as much data as possible, then looking for non-random movements to make predictions. A boon for the finance market. In sum, Renaissance Technologies used complex mathematical models to identify investment opportunities in financial markets. This approach, known as quantitative investing, was revolutionary at the time and allowed Renaissance to generate extraordinary returns. But here finally comes the genesis of success for Jim Simons when he launches the Medallion Fund in 1988. A secret source mainly shared with his team. This fund becomes a true legend raking in an astounding rate of 66% before fees. Yes, that's a lot of zeros. And 39% after fees. It was a smash hit. It's a certain Elwyn Burlkamp, freshly integrated into the team but whose talents are evident, who takes charge of Medallion, implementing short-term trading strategies and examining historical price data to identify trends. The whole team challenged the false notion that frequent trading should be avoided by identifying anomalies and peculiarities in the market. In 1990, Medallion's gains were phenomenal, reaching 55.9%. And it is precisely thanks to his share of the fund's profits that Simons officially became a billionaire. As Medallion broke through, Simons became more involved with hopes of greater gains for his company. A few changes among the shareholders led to the beginning of Medallion fund management by Renaissance. Despite its method being very controversial at the time by traditional investors who rely on intuition and subjective analysis, Renaissance makes its investment decisions based on data and the results of sophisticated mathematical models to analyze financial markets and identify inefficiencies. These models take into account a multitude of factors, such as historical prices, transaction volumes, economic news, and macroeconomic data. This disciplined approach allowed the company to minimize risks and maximize profits. The company employs computer models to predict price fluctuations of financial instruments, focuses on identifying small market inefficiencies, profits from them, and most importantly, keeps its investment strategies confidential. Simons expanded his team, and Medallion continued to achieve remarkable returns by exploiting the behavioral biases of other traders. As Medallion's gains attracted attention, Simons became increasingly secretive, limiting access to information about the fund's operations, which frustrated many. And that's another one of his secrets. Indeed, Jim Simons was known for his discretion and reluctance to speak publicly about his investment strategies. 
This confidentiality helped maintain Renaissance's competitive edge and protect its mathematical models from competitors. While making a fortune and amassing wealth, Jim continued to develop strategic alliances and persist in a culture of innovation and constant research within Renaissance. The company encouraged its employees to explore new ideas and develop new mathematical models to improve its performance and especially to keep competitors at bay to avoid being caught up or surpassed. Believe me, at the time, all competitors had their eyes on him. In 2004, the philanthropist founded Math for America, a non-profit organization with the mission of improving mathematics teaching in U.S. public schools. And in 2009, after accumulating substantial wealth for two decades, Simons chose to retire, passing the leadership to Robert Mercer and Peter Brown, planning to fully turn to philanthropy. By 2023, Renaissance Technologies had about 300 employees, including 90 PhDs in mathematics, physics, computer science, and related fields. The company owns a research database extending over 40 terabytes per day, 50,000 computer cores with 150 gigabits per second of global connectivity, and fully redundant computing facilities capable of supporting their trading operations. The company continues to generate billions, while the fervent supporter of education has started making donations to contribute to advancing research in several important areas, including medical research, environmental protection, and the arts. Simons and his wife